In this last lesson of the year, we are using the math that we've seen so far to solve um, problems that could arise in the real world. Because in the real world, we have limitations. Um, we have constraints. Uh, for instance, we might be trying to minimize cost, or we might be trying to maximize volume. For instance, in this explore problem, we have a 4x8 piece of plywood, and we are trying to build a storage box from it, and it says you must use six pieces, um, top, bottom, and sides of the box, so we are going to be building a rectangular prism. So let's visualize it. First thing they're asking us is consider the top, bottom, front, and back of the box. What dimensions must these rectangular pieces have in common? This needs to be the same in the um, top and the front. So we could say that the base of the top and bottom must be the same as the base of the front and back. And the front and back have to have the same height. Similarly, the left and right also have to have the same height. So what might be convenient is for these rectangular faces maybe to all be congruent. And so in order for that to be the case, my bases would have to be squares. So two different ways that we could break this up would be to take this 8 and divide it equally by 5 because I need these four this is 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6. These four that I've labeled on the right, those are going to be the lateral faces. And then this is also 1.6. But I said I wanted the top and bottom to be squares. So here's a square, there's a square. They're both 1.6 by 1.6. And I'm going to have a little bit of leftover space here. Okay. So the instructions said we do not have to use all the plywood. And so that's one way that I could break it up. Another way I could break it up is to maybe cut this part in half, okay? And then how can I maximize, um, if this is two and this is two, and I said I wanted the bases to be squares, then I'm cutting off two from here, leaving me with six remaining, so this is now three and three, and this time I'm actually using all of the plywood, so maybe that one will have a bigger uh, volume. So let's take a look. Since the next thing that they're asking us to do is calculate the volume of the resulting box for each of your designs. So for the design on the left, remember the volume of a rectangular prism is capital B times H. So the bases we said would be squares, so they'd be 1.6 squared, and then the height of this prism would be 4. So when I type this into my calculator, I get 1.6 squared times 4 is 10.24 uh, cubic feet. Whereas the box broken up here would have a volume of my capital B would be, again, area of the base. I said the bases are the squares, so that's the 2 by 2, so that's 2 squared, times the height of those would be 3, so 4 times 3 is 12 cubic feet. 
So certainly, and it should just make sense, I am getting more volume when I use more of the plywood. So in part D it says which design is better, the second. Do we think that one of our designs provides the greatest possible volume? Um, it's hard to tell. The second is better. because it uses all of the plywood. But right now it's kind of hard to tell whether this is the best way to solve the problem. How effective is this design in maximizing the volume? Well, once again, we're not using all of it so we probably already have a guess that it's going to be less than 12. But let's do the math and figure out. Now, they have uh, some of these lengths labeled as x, but right away, you'd realize that x is 1. All right, so volume equals 1 squared times 7, which is 7. So how effective is this design? Not very effective at all. Effective. Doesn't use all the plywood. And has less volume. Then example. B. What if I'm given the volume and I need to come up with the dimensions for it? So in this example that is completely worked out for us, they're telling us I have 150 cubic centimeters of wax and I'm trying to make a cylindrical can uh, candle. Um, and I want the height and diameter to be equal, so what will be the radius and what will be the height? And so they go through the process of solving it. One thing that I want to uh, clarify and do it a little bit differently than the way they do it in the book, they get to this point here, and instead of just taking the cubic root in your calculator, they say grab a graphing calculator. Um, you're not gonna have access to a graphing calculator on the EOC. You will have access to a scientific calculator and you either have a function like that in your calculator or you have something like this in your calculator. So understand that here the R is the cubic root of 23.9 and that's how you would find the, the 2.9 as the radius. In this example, we're working, at, working it out ourselves. Right? So this time I want it to be in the shape of a square prism. And it says, let the length of the base be B, and the height will be twice the base. So that's 2B. So the candle's volume, remember the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism is capital B times H. Since this is a square, the capital B would be B squared times the height. And then in the next step, it says substitute 2B in for H. Okay, so I'll have b squared times 2b, and if I simplify that, that's 2 times b to the third power. So if I substitute the given volume of wax, now I have that, these lines are so small, 300 equals 2 times b to the third power. When I divide both sides by 2, I have that b cubed 
is 150. Okay, and then it has this step that I don't really care for of graphing it. Instead, in your calculator, take the cubic root of 150. Okay, so in my calculator, I take the cubic root of 150, and I get approximately 5.31. So that's my capital B. The instructions, remember, said that the height would be twice the base. So the base, I'm sorry, the height will be 10.62. And then it says, how can we check to make sure that our answer is reasonable? Well, we could find the volume. Okay, so capital B times H. That'll be b squared times h. It would simplify to 5.31 squared times 10.62. Do I get really stinking close to 300? Let's see. I get approximately 299.8. I think I am maximizing the use of the 300 cubic centimeters of wax that I was given. Another example similar to it, I have a cone this time. The volume of a cone, remember, is one-third pi r squared h. In the instructions, we know that the volume is going to be 15 cubic inches. We want to figure out what the radius is, and they told us that the height is twice the ugh, diameter. All right, well, let's think about this a second. Diameter, we know, is two times the radius. So we want the height to equal two times the diameter. Okay, so we're substituting in for R for H. When we simplify this, we've got 4 thirds pi R cubed equals 15. So to solve for R, we multiply both sides by 3 fourths. Okay, so in our calculator, 15 times 3 fourths is 11.25 equals pi times r cubed. Divide both sides by pi. And r cubed is approximately 3.58. So r will be the cubic root of 3.58, which is approximately 1.53. So we know we want the radius to be 1.53 inches, and the height to be 4 times that, or 6.12 inches. In this example, we're using the fact that a tree needs a certain amount of leaf surface area in order to sustain a, the trunk. Okay, so they found the volume of the trunk and notice that we're told that this tree requires at least eight square feet of exterior canopy area per cubic foot. So they found the volume of the trunk. They used that eight square feet to find out the minimum exterior canopy area. And then using that, they found the minimum radius of that canopy. So in essence, they're finding how much space do I need to give this tree so that it will grow enough to support its trunk. So let's look at an example just like that. 
Here I have a growing oak tree with trunk diameter 12 inches requiring at least 12 square feet. And at this point you should stop reading and realize the problem is in two different units of measure. Okay, so 12 inches, this is one foot. All right, so let's continue reading. So suppose a growing oak tree with trunk diameter of one foot requires at least 12 square feet of exterior canopy area per cubic foot of trunk volume. All right, so this is important, so I'm gonna underline it. Model the canopy with a hemisphere and model the trunk with a cylinder whose height is 24 times the diameter. All right, well, the diameter is one foot, so the height of the trunk is 24 feet. If the diameter is one foot, then the radius is 0 0.5. And so now I have enough information to find the volume of the trunk. So remember this formula, pi r squared h. So pi times 0 0.5 squared times 24. And when we type that all into our calculator, uh, notice that they are leaving it in terms of pi, so let's follow their lead. 0.5 squared times 24. So the volume of the trunk is 6 pi. All right, so this 2 pi r squared is the surface area of the hemisphere. I know that I need at least this 12 square feet of exterior canopy per cubic foot, and I would multiply that times the uh, volume I found, which was 6. And so the 2 pi r squared on the left equals 72 pi on the right. And now if I take this 72 pi and divide it by 2 pi, r squared is what I'm left with, and it will equal 36. So that means r equals the square root of 36, which is just 6. So the minimum radius of canopy required for this oak tree is 6 feet. Well, how would I use this to make decisions about planting trees? Well, for instance, in this problem, if I need a radius of six feet, let's say, and this is my yard, um, I'm not going to plant this tree at three feet away from my fence. I wouldn't be giving my tree enough room to be healthy. Okay, so how can I put that in written word? How could you use this model to make decisions about planting trees? Use this model to determine the distance to plant a tree away from, let's say, a fence. The real world. 